We talked about the Bridgeport milling machine. Remember that? Yes. And where do you think the Bridgeport was made? Um, I'm thinking Bridgeport, Connecticut. Right on. Right on. Yeah. Very good. And when? What year? Take a guess. Hmm. Well, I know that dinosaurs are roaming around uh, somewhere. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were, the, the, the dinosaurs were running them. <laughs> yeah. All right, so 1936 is when it was founded. Wow. First Bridgeport was shipped in 1938, and the guys that founded it was Rudolph Banow. Wow, way back then. Way yeah. back then, yeah. Almost yep. 100 and, years. Jeez. And they've made hundreds of thousands of them since then. But anyway, I thought it would be really cool to talk about the anatomy of the machine, Right. About how it's constructed and what the features are and how to use them. Okay. But keep in mind that it is the most vertical, uh, the most versatile machine in a, in a machine shop. Why? Because it, it can act as a drill press or as a milling machine. There's so many things you can even do shaping with it. You can do slotting with it. You do all kinds of things. So for a tool shop that just wants to do onesies, twosies, threesies and doesn't get involved in production, production it's yeah. a perfect machine for that. And that's why it's been so popular, and there's been a lot of knockoffs, people that have tried to make them like Bridgeport, but they're, they're just not a They're like the Microsoft of machines back yeah, then. That, yeah, exactly right. And they are today. They're still they're expensive, but uh, they're worth every nickel. So sure. how about we go in the back, we take a look at a Bridgeport, and we'll talk about it. All right, <laughs> let's go back there. Okay, Glenn. How you doing? Bridgeport. <laughs> All right. I'm going to walk you through it. All right. This is if you don't know anything about the machine. Which and I know nothing. Okay, that's a good thing. So the idea of this video is to make sure that we introduce the Bridgeport, the most versatile milling machine or machine really ever made. A tool maker's necessity in a machine shop because it can do so many things, one up, ten up, whatever. So let's go from the very beginning. All right. I want to show you how to turn the machine on. Okay. And why you need to engage uh, the high gear, low gear, and how you can adjust the speed. We're going to okay. start with that. So Glenn, I like your suggestion about moving from the shop and going up front and doing a voiceover showing each detail of the machine. Uh, right. So thanks for that. I think that's a, close -up yeah, it's really. a great idea. And we get rid of the, the background noise and I think we can control it better. And I, I'm sure that our viewers are going to watch and like this much more mm -hmm. uh, up front here. So, All right, so there's the on-off switch. Okay. And there's a lever right below it, right there. That's a brake. That stops the spindle. It's not just on and off. It is that. But it's forward and reverse. And you have to pay attention to it. It doesn't say on and off. What it says is high, off, and low. So why does it say that? Because there's a back lever, a back gear lever, that is. It's marked high, low. And the two have to be coordinated. So right over here is the high-low lever. So that's called the back gear high-low lever. This is going to indicate there's proper switch position. They should be positioned alike or the spindle is going to run backwards. Right here is where you actually move the quill or the spindle up and down. Okay. And you can't quite see the spindle there, but you get the idea. The, the lever also pulls out there's a pin in there, so you pull it out, you can engage it and keep moving it up or down. In this case, we're moving it down. You can see by the, uh, the um, left side where the yeah. thread of rod is, right? Yep. So Glenn, right here, you'll notice that there are two little white windows there, and they indicate the speed of the spindle. And by the way, you don't want to change that spindle speed without it running. Yeah, it right. needs to run. Okay. Now, why are there two windows? Well, one shows the speed in low gear, and one shows the speed in high gear. Okay. So, that's why you have which two separate high, windows. Which low? The one on the left is for low speed, and the one on the right indicates a high speed when you're in high gear. Okay. Okay, so right here we're going to show how the spindle goes up and down. Right. And. You can see it's in a down position right now. And how did that happen, Glenn? You pulled the button? Right there. Now, that makes it go up. That's three positions. There's in, neutral, and out. So you can put it in neutral so it doesn't function at all. What's the knob he keeps grabbing right there? Oh, that's another good question. That changes the feed rate. 
So you can adjust it to slow, medium, and fast from six thousandths per revolution to three thousandths per revolution and only one thousandths per revolution. And you do that all without using the brake, right? Yeah, the brake is just to stop the spindle. Okay. Again, remember, when you're changing speed, the machine wants to be running. Now, right here, what we have is what we call, there's, the, there's three axes, X, Y, and Z. This is the X axis, which means that's right to left. Okay. Right here, we're setting the vernier. That's on a slip ring. So you can move that around to whatever you want, and the, the knurled part in the very front uh, is where you grab it to turn it. And below that, but where the handle is, there's another knurled knob. That knob you can lock. So that locks that vernier in position. So you move the vernier to where, wherever you want it. If you want to move it 20 thousandths, you take it from zero, move it to 20, and then you lock it with the second knurled knob right near the handle. Yeah. And each one of them is 200 thousandths in revolution. So one turn gives you 200 thousandths. Now, if we go to the next table, which is the, uh, the Y table, the Y table is in and out. And that is the same thing right there. The same vernier concept with the ability to lock it. And you notice the one on the far left, and we're going to get to that in a moment, but that does the same thing. That, they all three... X, Y, and Z axis, or I'm sorry, X, Y, and that is a Z axis of a form because it, it does go up and down. So really there's kind of two Z axis. One is the spindle and one is the bed. Okay, it's good to know. It's not quite technically like that, but right. that's a way to, to explain it. So you see that where that handle is at the bottom there and it's turned in. That handle is reversed right now. You can bring it back out so you can move the table up and down. And for storing purposes, we always put it that way so we don't catch our knee on it or our, pant, mm -hmm. our pants pocket or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then over to the left there is an oiler. And you okay. pull a lever up and it, and it squirts oil all over the place uh, to the ways, et cetera. How, how often do you check the oiler? You know, that, that's, that's a really good question. The, it should be filled and checked every day that you use a machine. Mm -hmm. okay. And I, when I'm running a machine, I like to operate that, about, that oiler about once an hour. You just pull the lever up and it gradually goes down and lubricates all the important parts. So here, you'll see that lever that moves the table, the bed up and down, is in the movable position. And now up here, we're at the top on the bed, we're showing three different setups. Two vices and an angle plate holding apart. So another, one of the most beautiful things about the Bridgeport machine is that you can do multiple setups at one time. Using one bit, right? Yep. Okay. Sure, you could use one or use five or whatever you want, but, oh, okay. but I can go from job to job. So here, right. somebody says, hey, I need three of these, Joe, and I can do that one. And oh, I need four of these, I can use the other vice, and so forth, without having to take it off and put it back on. That's nice. That's a good feature. It's a great feature. Now, this gets complicated. Let me explain some of this mm -hmm. to you. A lot of stuff there, right? Yeah, what is it? It's, it's well side view of what? Well, this is, again, the versatility of the machine. It's pretty amazing in that uh, you'll see on the far right where it says the bridge port there, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. there's a vernier scale on the bottom there. That whole head comes in and out. The part, the vernier that's kind of like a half moon. Yeah. That allows you to take that whole head and tilt it forward oh, and wow. back. Okay, yeah, I get it. And there's lock screws there that you can see that once you do that, you need to lock it in position. Mm -hmm. And Do you need two people to do this? Or well, is not, it, is it not, real heavy? not really because it's so heavy, but there's an adjustable bolt right at the top. Okay, kind of helps you. And, you can, and that, there's a rack gear in there, mm -hmm. and you can... Uh, loosen that and move it once you loosen the lock bolts you can put a wrench on that top bolt you can get it where you want it adjust it on the vernier and then lock the bolts back down oh where are we at now ah good question this is that whole bridgeboard head that supports uh the, the feed head and all of that 
This is the, I, I would call it the bed for the length adjustment, which means this is another versatility of this machine. You can move that whole spindle out or you can retract it. So it gives you the opportunity to extend even beyond the table. If you had some long job that was sticking out there and you had to get to it really? for whatever reason. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So it, can, it actually does the whole measurement. Yep. Okay. So there's two lock bolts. You right. see them right there. You have to loosen those. And then there's right in the middle is the adjustment bolt. So you put a crank handle on there and you crank that and that moves. Oh, okay. that, and that's on a rack gear. So that moves it in and out. Pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah, it's real cool. Okay. We're in the front, right? Yep, we're in the very front now. That's a head angle adjustment, which means you can tip that right to left. So we talked about it being able to go in and out. Now we're talking about it being able to go right to left. Wow. So those four bolts have to be loosened. All four. All four. And once that's done, then we go back over here. Okay. And we, there's a crank right up there at the the very top where it says right there. Adjustment bolt? Yep. And that's on a worm gear as well. So you crank that and that'll tip that head so, so you won't lose it. It won't fall in your, in your lap. Now when you uh, say you, crank it, when you turn it, it'll move or? Yeah, it's on a, it's, it, oh, correct, it's on a oh, gear. Okay. Right. So you actually, actually put a crank on there or a handle on there, right. a wrench, whatever, and then you, you gradually move that and that tips ahead and you can see what it's doing, how far you're moving it based on the vernier right there. Yeah. Now, in the event that you want to really make it accurate, once you put it back to neutral, what do you do then? How do you know that it's flat? The vernier is pretty close, but it's just not dead accurate. So that's when you have to go in there with an indicator and sweep the table. In fact, we have a video on that, on how to sweep the Bridgeport table and, and true it in, as we call it. So moving on to the next part, right here is where you can rotate that big round vernier that you see there, that whole assembly above there will go all the way around right to left. Wow, so the, whole, the whole big... The whole, uh, yeah, everything. Now there's two lock bolts right there on each side, two on this side and two on the other side. And there they are. So you have to loosen those before you can move the bed in a circular motion. Wouldn't it be pulling the drill away from the bed if you do that? I'm sorry? Doesn't it pull the drill away from the bed? Yeah, exactly. Okay. But if you had a part sticking way out, yeah, okay. You know, you, let's say that you had to come way out here the two feet or something, it would give you that versatility. that far. Just amazingly versatile machine. I, they, they just didn't forget a thing. Mm -mm. So that gives you an idea of what we're doing there. Here we have a readout, uh, which most machines uh, are equipped with because it's just not that much money anymore. It's a few thousand dollars and it gives you a great, uh, ac great deal of accuracy and it's, it's easier to use in the verniers. So if you don't have the readout, then you've got to use the vernier scale that are on the tables. Otherwise, so, so the this readout is came after this machine was built, right? Mm -hmm. So how they? My question: How they wire it in there to keep it so accurate? Well, they have to put what's called scales in there. They have to mount these scales on each of the axes, which is the X and the Y, okay. mm -hmm. and uh, and that's how they do it. So that then gets wired into the box, and away you go. That's real cool. Okay, so there you go, Glenn. I really liked your idea of coming up front here and doing okay. this. It made a lot more sense, frankly. Yep. Uh, but, you know, for those of you that want to see the Bridgeport in operation, we have several videos showing that. One of them was, well, as we talked about, truing the table. Another one was using a boring bar. Uh, one was using the fly tool cutter. So there's a whole bunch of videos that we have showing the machine in operation. That's why I didn't think it was necessary for us to show this in operation at this time. Right. So folks, uh, keep watching us. Uh, you'll find us on uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. There you go. YouTube. So again, folks, thanks for watching and uh, always welcome to hear your comments and we'll look forward to responding to them. Uh, so keep on watching and mm -hmm. hope to see you next time around. Yep. Okay, folks, so thanks for watching. I wanted to bring up the fact that 
this video can be pulled up on your smartphone while you're in the in the shop and should you be back there and you have some questions about the operation of the machine or the features pull the video up and take a look at it and hopefully that's going to help you out in the shop so again thanks for watching